Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platformer in Unity. In this video, we will be adding some left and right movements to our player character. We will be doing this in the language of C-sharp, which is one of the two native languages that are included in the Unity game engine. The other is JavaScript. In this video, I will be using Visual Studio 2017. If you're if your Unity game engine comes with uh, or is using Visual Studio 2019 or Mono Develop, for the purposes of this tutorial, that's going to be perfectly fine. Nothing will be different from what I'm doing to what you are doing. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here into our Assets folder, where we have our Art folder and our Scenes folder, and we're going to right click here and we're going to create a new folder for our scripts which we'll just call scripts then we're gonna open our folder we're gonna right click go all the way to the top to create again and click on C sharp script and then we're gonna call this script player controller then we're gonna click on this and open up Visual Studio once you have Visual Studio open you'll see up here you have three lines with the term using in it. So these are namespaces and namespaces are a collection of classes and other data types that are used to categorize libraries which the libraries are all the commands we can use in our program. Now the first two ones are part of classes that are .NET and .NET is uh, the Microsoft developer platform for building applications and you can see these two are grayed out and it says right there using directive is unnecessary because there's nothing in the program right now that's using anything in those libraries but as you can see the unity engine is not grayed out because it's using this whole set of code right here all this under this public class player controller mono behavior and actually if I were to take this and just take it out for a second this will go gray because it's not being used right now and then I'll just paste it back in and then it blackens again. Um, most people and even me usually delete this but I'm just uh, delete these two but I'm gonna leave them here for now they're not for the purposes of this tutorial they're not hurting anything and they're also not helping anything. Um, and like I said using Unity Engine is a collection of all the classes related to the Unity program. So a class as we see right here it defines the kinds of data and the functionality their objects will have and an object is basically a block of memory and just to show you what I'm talking about let's say I have a class and I call it cars and inside this cars I have an int called doors and it's equal to 2 so much more of all this will make sense as we go further into the tutorial but int is basically uh, an integer and a number that is not a decimal one two three four it can also be negative five negative six doors is the name I gave my integer and two is the value of the of the doors and every line in C sharp uh, has to have a colon at the end I'm sorry semicolon at the end to indicate that the line is ended that there's no more information going on here so the class is called cars it's the it's the data set I have created and the object I've created inside cars is this int called doors somewhere in the computer there's a memory allocation for this name doors and it's given the value of two now let's say I try to type in another object called doors and I equal it to 4. Now the computer is now confused because it says well hey you already have an integer called doors you can't make another one and call it something else. So let's say let's erase this for a second and let's create another class called we'll make another int oops oops we didn't name our class let's create another class called houses 
and let's make an int and we'll call it doors and we'll set it equal to four. I don't know for some reason you got four doors in your house. So um, right here I can use the term doors because now I have it under the class of house. So classes are used in ways to tell the computer, hey, there's a group of data under this listing of cars and in it is this integer called doors and it has two. Likewise, there's another class called houses and it has an integer called doors and that equals to four. And that way the computer can know what integer to use in terms of what class. So back to Unity, we have a public class and it's the name of our script here called player controller and it's called mono behavior and if you could see if I highlight over mono behavior it is the base class from which every unity script is derived and that means everything that we put into our mono behavior class all this all this stuff in here it will know it's all part of mono behavior and just to show you what I'm talking about we're going to make a public rigid body 2d and as you type, at least in mine, it will show up sometimes what you're typing. And we're going to type RB, and we're just going to put a semicolon there. And right here, when we type public from this point on, it will appear in the Unity editor when we attach our script to our, to our component. And right here we have rigidbody2d. And as you can see, this is another class. It's a class in Unity Engine dot rigidbody2d and it has a basic definition rigid body physics component for 2D sprites which is what we're using now if I right click on this and I go to go definition it will take me to the definition of this rigid 2D so right here we have our namespace that we talked about our unity engine and everything in it and in it is our rigid body 2D class and rigid body 2D class is all this stuff if we were to type this from scratch it would include all these codes which inside of it contains a whole bunch of other stuff it would be very very long and by using th this command phrase right here rigid body 2d we can use all this attached code to it so let's go back just go up here and hit this back and it'll send us back to our script so the next thing we're gonna see is right here is this green line which has two forward slashes and a start is called before the first frame update. This right here is called a comment. This is pretty much in every type of computer coding you're gonna encounter. And it always begins with two forward slashes like that and then you just put your comment. And this is basically a note to yourself, to other programmers, of what the code is doing. It's very good practice to comment what you're doing in your code. So and when the computer sees these two forward slashes it's automatically going to know it's a common if we were to omit any of this it wouldn't have any effect on running the code it's just a note for ourselves or other programmers and right here we have a function and our function is this is the start function this is in this will appear by default in unity's c sharp script and it basically is anything as the note says called before the first frame update when we push play this will happen first and then after all that is going to be our void update which is anything that is updated once per frame like what we're programming right now which is our movement so in our update once per frame here under update we're going to make an if statement and an if statement is a conditional statement it's going to say if this is done do this so in the case of ours this right squiggly line right here means that the computer does is something's wrong here in terms of the code doesn't understand what's going on here because I should have something in this parentheses and this parentheses right now is my conditional statement it's the if part of the if statement so what I'm going to type is input dot get key and in parentheses key code dot a and we'll go to the end and we'll close the parentheses again so basically what this says is that 
it's I'm going to input something and I'm going to input a key from the keyboard and it wants to know what key I'm doing which is the key code and this right here is the key I'm going to be hitting it's going to be the A button actually let's let's make that the D button we're doing forward first so if I hit the D key is basically what that says so if our key our D key is pushed what we want to happen is we're going to type RB dot velocity is going to equal to new vector 2 and we're going to create a parentheses 5 comma 0 and I'll explain this right now so if we push our D key what basically what we want is to define the velocity of our rigid body which we named up here when we put RB it's referencing this rigid body up here this is what why we put this up here this is just saying so we can easily instead of typing public or just rigid body 2d all the time we can give this short little name RB and we can reference it anywhere else in our code and this is where we referenced it dot velocity 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 is defined as a distance over time so this is the rate of change we want our rigid body to move and that velocity is going to equal a new vector 2 every time the frame plays and we or every time we push our D key it's going to create a new vector that is going to move a distance of 5 in the X direction and 0 in the Y direction it's going to move horizontally 5 and 0 Y because when we push the D key we just want them to move forward we don't want them to go up so just to recap what we've done here, we we'll go back up to the top. We have these libraries up here, one of which is called Unity Engine, which inside Unity Engine is a bunch of code that we can access for using in our game design. And inside the Unity Engine is this Mono Behavior class, which is just a subdivision inside Unity Engine that allows us to use all these different types of command inputs that are inherent to Unity you can't use rigid body 2d in any other C sharp program it, it's not gonna understand what you're talking about or key code or vector 2 these are things that are inherent to unity so inside our code we created another class which is the rigid 2d body which is a class that we can use for our 2d sprites and we called it RB down here every frame we want to push our D button and have our character move right so that is designated by the fact that we have an input we are going to input something the thing we are going to input is a key and our key code which is inside our unity editor I'll show you that later is the D key and what we want to happen when we push our D key is we want our character move to the right so we have to designate what we're talking about which rigid body we're talking about because we can have more than one rigid body inside a script so we're saying hey this is this this is the rigid body we want to move we want it to move with velocity and our velocity is defined by a vector that is going to move five to the right and zero vertically up or down so we're going to go up here we're going to hit save we're going to go back in unity and it's going to compile for a moment and so we're going to go ahead and click on our player and here is our, our player component our player object with all its components in it and we're gonna attach our script here oops we're gonna attach our script here simply by dragging it over like so and here it is so here's our player script and here is our B here is our 2d rigid body that we named but it has nothing attached to it we haven't we haven't told the script what rigid body we're attaching to it because like I said it could have more than one rigid body or it needs a definition of what it's talking about and this might seem a little odd that we're in our player here that I'm gonna take our player and I'm gonna drag him into this box right here so we're designating this rigid body this pl our player as the rigid body we're using here back in our script so now we're gonna hit play and now when I hit the D key our character moves to the right and now he, he has this little bit of a slide to him because there's other things we have to do to 
adjust the control functions of our character but we got what we wanted out of this so and he doesn't move if I push any other key he doesn't do anything the only thing of functionality is the D key and he went off screen so now let's have him move in the other direction let's go down here back into our script and this is going to be pretty simple we're just going to highlight this copy it and we're going to paste it and we're going to just change two things we're going to change that to A and we're going to add a negative to this so it's basically the same thing if we input the A key we want him to move negative 5 in the other direction so he moves in forward he moves positive he moves 5 and when we hit the A key he's going to move backward negative 5 so we're going to hit save. We're going to go back into our Unity editor. We're going to let it compile, which it did. And when I mean it compile is that this is a C sharp is a uh, compiled language, meaning that the the code is going to go into a compiler which is going to take everything and it's going to put it together and then when we hit play it runs it this is as opposed to what's called an interpreted language and in an interpreted language it doesn't compile it basically when you hit start it just goes line by line by line by line by line and the best way to describe how this works is as if you had a book let's say the book Don Quixote in Spanish and you spoke English and you wanted to be able to read this book in a different language a compiled language would be like somebody translated the book to you wrote it down and you had an English copy of the book. A interpreted language would be as if someone read, read the book in Spanish and then repeated it in English to you. And that might be a little uh, convoluted, but I hope it gave you a good understanding of the differences between compiled and interpreted languages. So we're going to go back into Unity and we don't have to change anything. You know, the the player controller script is right here with the rigid body in it we just added more code to it and we're gonna hit play again and our character moves right when we hit D and he moves left when we hit A here's his positive 5 direction and here's his negative 5 direction and we can make this any number we want if we wanted to slow him down we could change these two numbers to 1 and negative 1 5 is just what I shows right now and we'll see when we go back into the editor and to compile hit play he's gonna move a lot slower because he's only moving one right now and he's gonna move back a lot slower so we'll I like the five we'll just keep it for right now maybe we'll change it later hit save and go back in so that's where we're going to end for today. We went over a lot of complex things today. I know that it might seem overwhelming to some. Uh, don't worry, we're going to be going over these concepts again and again and again as we go through this tutorial series. So as always, thank you for watching. Like my video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.